Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Martin Lucas Investor. The first time ever for an exclusive, world exclusive, live video interview that is uh, members only. We want to do something special uh, for our members, always increasing your value and giving you the best service and bringing you great content and interviews that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, and as 98% of my live viewers are members now, we're not missing that many people either, are we? Anyway, let's get straight into it. Now, you, rem you will remember this gentleman. Uh, he's famous and loved on our channel because he was behind, you may remember, the petition that we put to Eric Kearney, Virgin Galactic. Um, and uh, you may remember he got the petition signed. We, uh, I promoted it on the show, of course. It got signed and policy, we believe, was changed. Uh, maybe because of us, who knows? But things did change. However, after that, I started to speak to Eric Kearney regularly. I had a weekly meeting with Eric Kearney. That went on for several weeks. And uh, on the 6th, I think the 5th or the 6th meeting, as you know, now infamously know, uh, I got a bit frustrated because every time Eric Kearney spoke to me, it was what I regarded as lip service. It was the same message every time. He would never let me record the, the conversations, never let me, would never come on live, would never um, stand behind what he said. It was just telling me and I was able to share what he told me, but no more than that. Wouldn't ever give me any extra information uh, uh, and uh, was quite happy with the price of Virgin Galactic going down as he told me, because um, we're, we're okay with it, with the market where it is. Well, we all know the S&P rallied 30%, but yet Virgin Galactic is now down at where we predicted, $1.10. Will it be at $1 today? Who knows? Then we face, of course, delisting. Very painful for a lot of people. A lot of you have lost money, including myself, 35 grand down. The, the gentleman that we have on now, as you know, uh, at the time was one uh, was a very, very large uh, investor, a retail investor, uh, a very large retail investor. I'll let him tell you more. And uh, we, had, we have a great relationship with him. So anyway, shall I bring him onto the show? Members only special. You can put your questions, of course, to him. It's our star guest and we're honoured to have him back on the show. Of course, I'm talking about... Andy Shovel, how are you, sir? Lovely to see you back on the show. Yeah, likewise. Thanks so much, Martin. Uh, good to chat to you again. Um, as you pointed out earlier, I'm now heavily bearded. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know how you're doing 12 hours a day. I'm, I'm in awe of your uh, stamina. Um, but, I love um, it. It doesn't feel... It's like the CEO of NVIDIA says the same thing. He works like 18-hour days. He works and just sleeps. Right. That's it. Work and sleep, work and sleep. I love every second of it. And uh, earlier on, uh, just before we spoke to you, uh, speaking to you now, we had two guests, one from London, one from Dubai phoning in, actually from Egypt now, but originally from Dubai and uh, discussing with them. We had a uh, Mike, his, his mum, his 90th birthday. She was on the show. It's the greatest job in the world. And when you see the love that we get here and everyone's a member, 98%. We have the highest engagement of any channel on, on planet Earth. And we're, we're, we're gaining, we're doubling our growth every month. Uh, we, we know in seven years, we're going to be a hundred, uh, we're going to be uh, 10 million, which will make us the biggest financial channel in the world, more than Bloomberg, CNBC, Ali together. So, uh, we love it. I, I love what I do and I love uh, being able to talk to you again. Um, so thank you for taking the time. I know we are under, uh, under the time today. You've got to get off. You're a very busy man running your companies. You are a big investor in, Re in Virgin Galactic. You've heard about my st history with, uh, uh, um, Eric, I wasn't too uh, complimentary to him. You just heard the introduction. Had a great relationship, the first four meetings, the fifth meeting, the sixth meeting. I just got tired of repeating the same thing, not getting anywhere. And for him to say he was happy with the stock price being where it was and kept referring back to, you know, he gets stock options. And when I was at GameStop, the short, we shorted the market and I'm... You know, that's great for you, paying yourself in stock options. The cheaper it gets, the more shares you get. But what about the retail investor who's put their hard-earned money to build this business? They can't afford the shares to keep going down and down and down. It's not always uh, buy the dip. Eventually, it'll be zero. Andy, 
how do you feel about it all? You know what? I, I still uh, am actually feeling quite buoyant about it all. And going back to your um, description of, you know, comms with Eric, I obviously wasn't there and I've just heard what you've just told me. But I, you know, perhaps I will give him the benefit of the doubt. And, and maybe what he was getting at was that he gets to have, you know, the employees of Virgin Galactic get to have more shares and they really believe in the company. So they're happy to get more shares. Um, versus if the price is really expensive because they know it'll come good in the next few years. Who knows? With, regard, with regards to my own view on the company, um, let's park the Boeing lawsuit for a second because that's a bit of a curveball. If you think about everything else, um, the company is in a relatively good cash position. They shared with us at the last earnings call that they are able to get Delta flying and operational with the current capital reserves that they have. That's a huge statement to make for us shareholders, absolutely huge. Personally, I have a degree of skepticism having done the numbers on the back of a fag packet. But if that's what they say, then that's that's got, we've got to assume that's plausible on some level. And that's really massive. That makes me feel relatively relaxed, if I'm honest, because I, uh, I look at the share price today. I'm probably the best part of half a million dollars down on my original investment. Um, um, and I... To be honest, I'm. I wouldn't say I was relaxed because I'm. I'm. I'm not a you know multi 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 millionaire. But um, <laughs> I, I, I have to say, if I was giving you a real dirty, guilty insight into my into my thinking, I might buy a few more shares. <laughs> Ooh. Um, okay. Well, that will that will you watch. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the stock price move on that. I, I, I know we're a small channel, but we're growing and we've got a very passionate audience here. And uh, it has rallied today when I put this announcement out that there was a guest on the show and people guessed it was going to be you. They knew it wouldn't be Eric, so he just refuses to do it. Um, but uh, that that's interesting. And actually, we do have in the chat some similar size of uh, investors to you, sir. Uh, we've got uh, a few, actually, people that are with you, uh, very passionate with you, who equally share your uh, optimism, even though it's, you know, you know, it's not comfortable, but you're still bullish. And we have, we have those people here still holding on. In fact, uh, we're still, and buying with you, buying more on the way down. Now, as you know, I, I love Virgin Galactic. I love the product. I don't like the management. I've had chance to talk with Eric many times and I just, I'm not impressed. I'm, I mean, there it is. I'm, just, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm not impressed, but I love what they've done. The product is amazing. I don't think there's any competition. The trouble is what scares me, Andy, is the world's catching up. Technology is catching up. And it's not just the few years that we've been covering this. It's been Virgin Galactic has been going for a long time now. And the world has moved on and everyone's landing on the moon now. When we're building, flipping, we're, we're going to land on Mars and build planets and build planets, build space stations. So it's not going to be long before someone goes, well, I've got, I can fly you to space as well. I can do the same thing. Chinese are going to pop up and everybody else. And uh, I just think Virgin Galactic are just, you know, it, I don't believe, I know what you're saying. They've got enough cash and everything's good. And we knew it would go to sleep with Delta. We, all of that is true. And, and I, and I'm with, with, understand that. However, I just feel that the stock is under way undervalued for the cash on the books alone. Right mm. now, some companies are, you know, worthy of a penny stock. They are worthy of a dollar. They, they are. This isn't one of those companies. And even though we're going to sleep for a while for Delta, they could drive this stock price up. It could be it could be three or four dollars. Just announce a flight. We thought we had one last week. We announced it. There was a calendar for space flights. There's a, there's a website which covers all space you know flights, and it was on there. There was a, there was this date, the first of April, the first the tenth of April. It's disappeared now. It's gone. Nothing ever happened of it, um, and no mention of it. And and like we've said, and like I put to. Um, Eric, I said, Eric, I know you said to me, it doesn't matter about a celebrity. Everyone's a celebrity. Everyone's important. We're not trying to make it, you know, when the, when someone famous flies, it spoils it for Fred Bloggs, who's just got enough money to buy a ticket and, and all of it, be all about Taylor Swift or whoever. I said, that's, I get your point, but you look at other brands, Rolex, 
Ferrari, they don't mind putting a celebrity in front of it now and again. Look what happened to Levi last week with uh, uh, J-Lo. Uh, we reported on it. Look at Levi. It's having a massive resurgence because of, you know, the video, her wearing the jeans. If we had that happen for Virgin Galactic, we would, we, you know, we're not going to be where we dream of it being a hundred dollars straight, you know, immediately, but it wouldn't be one dollar fifteen. It would be four, three or four dollars at least, at least the cash value of the of the books. And it's like they're they're content with it going down. And it's that which annoys me. I get it's great for them because if they pay themselves, you know, a hundred grand a week in wages and they take it as stock options, they get more and more shares for the same money, for less money. But for the retail investor, there's guys here who've, who've only got fifty dollars and it's their it's their money. It shouldn't be this low. I would I wouldn't I, I would urge you to reconsider the assumption that Virgin are happy with the low share price. And I know they've said they are. Um, so mm. maybe I'm but, but, but um, if, if you just if you just think for a second, put yourself in the position of a, a, a of a founder or CEO or even senior management in a company whose share price is plummeted. You're not going to go publicly on a on a you know talking to shareholders or even on a podcast like this or whatever. You're not going to say, um, we're devastated at the share price because then it will plummet even lower. <laughs> so you have to say this is all in the plan. This is all in scope. We're calm and we're getting on with business. You know, they are saying a highly conventional set of statements to basically placate uh, the, the world's investment community and, and media. And I think it's exactly what almost every other company would say in their position. I don't think you'd ever get a company saying, you know what, Martin, we are devastated at the share price. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it would erode confidence even more. Now, now, having said all that, and I've been quite defensive of Virgin, and I mentioned I'm you know, having dirty thoughts about reinvesting more. Um, there, <laughs> the, Boeing, the Boeing lawsuit is a big problem. And um, I don't think Boeing are in, are in the habit of losing lawsuits to little startups. Um, because they have limitless resource. And I know they've had their own problems recently, but don't you worry about how much uh, uh, they've got in, in the kitty for stuff like this. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Boeing lawsuit ends up being an existential problem for Virgin because it might mean if they lose and they have to pay costs, because the claim will only be for whatever, $25 million uh, that they're owed, which is not very much in the grand scheme of things for Virgin. But if they have to start paying legal costs and damages, um, it could be, you know, in the hundreds maybe because a company like Boeing doesn't sue cheaply. <laughs> so they they will have armies of lawyers and huge costs. Um, so what will happen if in a bad case with Boeing is that they uh, go to court, which is already a terrible outcome, um, and there'll be lots of expense before they get there. They go to court, they lose, um, and then they have to pay all, all, all the damages and legal costs. And that will mean then that, that Virgin can no longer get Delta operational uh, without going to market and raising. And the investment community will put two and two together and realize it's a bit of a basket case and they shouldn't invest any more. Uh, so, so that could become, in my opinion, an existential problem for Virgin. And it's why I may end up not investing more and I may parry away all the dirty guilty thoughts I'm having about investing more. <laughs> I have to say you're a very brave man because... You know, I think proportionality uh, uh, of investment is important. I'm sure you understand that. But like, don't go all in on a stock. I t try to tell people every day when they go, oh, my favorite stock is this, my favorite stock is that. You know, you're in a position where I'm sure you won't enjoy losing half a million, you know, losing your investment. You say you're half a million down if it got worse. You know, well, you, 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 oh, not quite. Yeah, you don't want to lose that. But you are in a, you are in a position to pick yourself up and carry on where that we do have people here who put all their money and their mortgage money and their car loan money on Virgin Galactic with nothing else. There's no SNP, there's no backup plan. And of course that's a different ball game for them. Um, you know, I, I'm not in the stock anymore because I'm not in any stock anymore. I made the decision to be a media channel, which is how I do my interviews of CEOs. I've got lots to lots coming up this year. Um, and, uh, so, so, you know, but I would love, I am still in love with Virgin Galactic. I'm not impressed with the management. I, I'm not cause I've spoken to the, him, Eric, at least anyway, uh, five or six times. And, um, he, he just never says it. He, he just, it, it's like he doesn't. He doesn't seem to 
he doesn't seem to really get it that retail investors with a stock like this, not everyone's an institution, not everyone is a, a wealthy business owner. Some people, like yourself, but some people just love the rock and roll stocks, things like Space and Tesla and Fisker and all these things. It's the future, AI, whatever it might be. And they put their money, perhaps, okay, it's their fault, it's their money, it's, you know, it's your responsibility. But uh, it does... Um, it does. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> Sorry, he, he wants he wants some attention. This is absolutely this is, right. Absolutely before. right. What's his What's his name? His name's Winky. Winky. Well, Winky, yeah. I got a surprise for you. Winky, look at this. Winky, look. You watch. Winky, Wink, uh, Winky might react now because we've got on our channel a new star guest. We've got the little fellas. Ah, <laughs> the little wink, fellas. Wink. There you go. But we also have some winky woos as well. Look, <laughs> meow. Hello. Yep. Where's my mate? <laughs> meow. <laughs> he's, he's 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 more interested in a, a pack of half eaten cookies I've got on my desk. So yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, yeah, look, I think you know th there are reasons to believe um, the, the the company is valued. I think at roughly half its actual cash consideration value. Um, so it's undervalued really. Um, wow. and you know, you don't hear that very often. No. And there are nuggets coming out. Right. So like, I, I believe, I believe that, that I think there was a nugget in, um, you know, the Delta diaries that they've been doing on yeah. social media. Yeah. So, it. So, yeah. So, so for the benefit of your audience who may have may or may not have seen it, that they're, they're putting out now regular videos, which hopefully is because we asked them in our petition to put out more comms. Um, but they're putting out regular videos on the development of their new Delta fleet. And the latest one came out uh, yesterday, I believe. Yeah. And it was, it was, I think there was a message hidden in there, obviously not deliberately, but I think we can infer from it quite a big, uh, quite a big scoop, actually, if I'm correct, which is they talked a lot about the performance of the rocket motor improving significantly on the Unity. Um, yeah motor and what i believe that means because it won't be for no reason right what i believe that that is alluding to is they are aiming to get above the common line um which would be officially space by any measure because at the moment there's some debate about whether they're in space or they're in near space if if they if if my assumption is correct that the increased performance uh is because they want to get above that common line then that's actually a huge deal because that's a big detractor for people that may have invested in tickets, but, but, you know, were worried they weren't actually going to space. They were just going kind of high up. Um, and I, I think that's material. I'm not sure it's, you know, going to make or break the company, but I certainly think it's a material factor that, that it works in their favor. If it's, uh, if the assumption's correct. I agree. I saw that and I, I, I felt the same. I thought that was, that's a good thing. I think I, I feel the same as you. I don't think it's going to transform everything. Suddenly everyone buys it because of that. But yeah, there were some haters and there were some people who always used to say, well, it doesn't really go into space, blah, 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 blah. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, tell that, tell that to the astronauts that looked out the window. They felt they were in space. They're flirting around, looking at the earth. It looks, it, I mean, I wouldn't, argue, I wouldn't go, I don't really feel like I'm in space here. I certainly would yeah. feel that. So, but yeah, obviously it's good. And then you think, well, where can it go from there? What if we, what if we can go a little bit further and have a little nip around, you know, sort of head towards the moon a little bit. Maybe we could look out the window and say, oh, there's the moon over there. Uh, and then we turn back and come back. I mean, uh, no idea if that's on the cards at all. Who knows? You know, what can come I next? Think, I but, think probably, I think know. probably not that the, the, the engineering is, is, is not uh, anywhere close to what they would need to, um, to either get into orbit or to, to leave orbit. Um, for like loads of reasons. Um, it's some different of them, product altogether, isn't it? It's a whole it's start a product, again. Yeah, I, I think the requirements are totally different. Um, but um, but look on the on the um, on the company itself. I think what we should be concerned with is probably Boeing because uh, the company had a tough enough job as it is getting to uh, you know cash flow positive, getting Delta in the air. But now they've given themselves you know this other. Um, massive, massive challenge when they're, they're ta legally taking on one of one of the world's, not just America's, one of the world's biggest and most powerful companies. Um, and uh, someone's fellow hello, Winky. Say hello, yeah. Winky. Not licking chocolate. <laughs> not, you're not allowed chocolate. It's, it's bad for cats. 
Um, so anyway, apologies, uh, Martin, for the unprofessionalism. No, no not, a, not at all. It's absolutely fine. It's uh, making the, the video more entertaining, to be quite honest. People, <laughs> people love it. When I started bringing the little fellas in, people actually super chat me just to see the little fellas. I don't know how many super chats I'm going to get for Winky. Keep doing that. By the end of the video, I might earn 20 bucks, but I, I might be able to buy the whole of uh, Virgin Galactic with the super chats. <laughs> I, I think the responsible thing to do would be to uh, create a, a, a revenue split with Winky and give him give him some treats um, he, he <laughs> i just, don't share just, my super i don't share my super chats with anyone they're mine <laughs> i earn it it's mine it goes straight into the s&p 500 hey a lot um, of uh, a lot of people have called here they want they want to do another petition and i've said i'm not going to do it right now because yeah. i just lost interest with not, not interest but uh, my time is extremely valuable and i don't get anything out of eric anymore and i've got loads of ceos that want to talk to me virgin galactic don't want to talk to me well eric continued but i don't want to talk to him anymore um but um uh, you know I, just to go round and round the same mulberry bush every time just going answering the same questions never telling me anything um yeah. that's, that's no good to me so people have said they feel eric should be fired no one like we did a poll I mean, it was it was really. I don't know if you saw it. It was like ninety seven percent on our, on our ex account wanted Eric fired. Not just he's okay, he's all right, but ninety seven percent. It was a large a large poll too. Said fire him. They, they don't think he talks and relates to to the investors. And I've shed it. And okay, maybe it's a bit bit biased and impartial because I've not been able to let everyone see Eric for themselves, but I have relayed word for word what he says. I write it down and relay it because I'm allowed to do that, but he won't come on camera. So he hasn't helped himself, you know, but from what I've told people, everyone wants him gone. They think, no, this guy isn't good. You know, no one likes him. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether you like him yeah, or not. But. I, I don't know. I mean, I think, um, you know, I think he has a difficult job in some ways because uh, with a publicly listed company um that there's really he really has to be very careful to um you know about what he says uh, yeah but let me ju- let me let me jump in that I, I don't want to be cut you off and i'm always i always make a point of giving everyone the chance to say their thoughts but i really want to make sure that we get some meat and bones out of our chat today because a, a lot of people here are really angry and really upset and i don't mm. want any point to get lost so apologies for me jumping in but like um you know uh to say, and this is what he told me and what you just said there, can't say this, can't say that. He keeps telling me, we've got regulations, we've got this. I can't, I, to, honestly, Andy, I've learned a lot. It's rubbish. I've interviewed, I've interviewed four or five CEOs. I've got another 10 or 20 in the, in the pipeline. They're all talking to me. They're, they're even coming to me and asking to be on the show. And we even have now a fee. They pay to be on the show. And they want to talk to me. So this this thing about we can't say this and we can't say that, of course they can't give inside information, but they won't even come on and talk to their, their investors. It's, mm. the, it's the disrespect. And I've got companies bigger and smaller that pay to come on and want to, to use our media, want to talk to their investors. So I find it, and I have to say, I have, you know, I have to defend my viewers and my members and the investors. You know, we, we, we can't, you know, people accept mediocrity too easily these days and go, ah, well, it's benefit the doubt. I don't think, I mean, I mean, if he worked for you, would you be happy? I couldn't say, I know, I know I'm being boring. <laughs> I, I know I'm being boring, but I've had quite limited. No, not at all. You know, I, I had one call with him, I think, and then I had, a, or maybe a couple of calls, and I had a few emails. Um, so, so I, I think what's more important than than Eric is 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 the prospects of the company. Uh, Agreed. Are, are we are we all going to lose our money, or are we going to uh, come good and 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 suddenly we don't look so stupid in in a couple of years? I, I hope the latter. I think that um, you know what's happened recently with the share price in the last like week or so is clearly Boeing related. Yeah. Um, because because we were sort of settled around what were we one point seven something? I don't remember, but we were we were nowhere near where we are now. And then suddenly it nosedived right uh, over about three days. So um, so yeah, I, th- I think I think Boeing for me is is at the forefront of my mind. I want to see how that plays out. Um, but if that ends up not being too punitive for the company financially, then I'm pretty bullish. And you know, we could have a crash in testing. We could have all sorts of things go wrong. But I like the fact that they've claimed they can get to Delta and they can get to cash flow positivity on their own now. Um, I think it's exciting. 
So Boeing withstanding, I'm feeling pretty positive. Well, I know you haven't got much. I know you've got to run. So uh, have a, a, just very quickly, guys, if anyone has a, a, a question, you are talking to a, you know, a major investor here in Virgin Galactic. He is relatively bullish relatively he's not made that commitment whether he's going to buy lower but he's on the he's on the fence he's considering it at least uh, that's a good thing he's not selling out he's not going i'm done and dusted and you know, i'm running to the hills that's very encouraging and i'm sure many of you will take some comfort from that i know zach zate one of our major investors here certainly will uh, we've got a member here andy that visited the spaceport for our show went to the mm. spaceport walked around you know t t touched eve did all those things he was oh, so proud cool. yes it was very cool he was so proud uh, it brought tears to my eyes actually i actually made a music video out of it because he's so passionate he went there and uh eve was behind him and uh we caught this live on camera it was a moment i'll never forget and i made a music video out of it i put the rocket man theme tune that me singing it to it and he stood yeah. there proud as punch his chest out and he went Eve. <laughs> and it was like, you could see how much it meant to him. He's a massive space fan. He loves it all. And he's gone, he's gone all in. Um, and he's in position. He can afford to lose it. He doesn't want to though. But, um, you know, and you could see that, you know, the investors, it seems have more passion than some of the board members. Uh, and I just want to see them do well. And I would hate for this yeah. to fail. It shouldn't fail. I mean, I, I agree with you. Boeing has been has caused the damage right now. But if we were at three and four, we'd be down to two and three, right? You know, we're as opposed to one fourteen. I mean, God forbid, Andy, we're approaching delisting of a rocket company that's successful. Can you believe it? Yeah, I mean, it is scary. It is scary, and then that's why I'm not coming on your show and saying it's all good. We're all going to make millions because because clearly <laughs> there are like there are quite serious risks associated with the company. Yeah, so. Um, uh, I think I think that um, uh, nothing. Hopefully, nothing much is going to happen with this share price until Delta starts testing. And if Delta tests successfully, I believe uh, I believe that the share price could rally at that point. So we're talking probably late twenty twenty five or something like that. Um, I, I think unless something really adverse happens, perhaps with, with Boeing or something, I think that the share price will probably just bounce around at sort of one dollar, two dollars, maybe even three dollars. But uh, yeah, that, that's that's my thinking. But I'm not an analyst, I should say, and, and I'm just an enthusiast. So I don't really know what I'm talking about from a professional <laughs> point of view. Um, <laughs> hey, I think we're all the same, mate. I ain't got a clue. I wake up every morning and think, how did I get here? I used to tour around singing songs, doing Elton John and all that kind of malarkey. And here I am now on a TV show uh, pretending I know what I'm talking about. Well, there you go. Uh, no <laughs> one really knows, do they? Let's be honest. No one knows whether the stock's going up, down, left, right, or sideways to, to, to coin a phrase from the film, The Wolf of Wall Street. Nobody does. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, tomorrow we could find that everyone dumps the stock or you say we crash. Oh my God, God forbid we crash. We have a crash, mm. it breaks mid-flight. I think we all know what comes next. It's, it's, it's a race to get your shares out, right? Everyone, so! <laughs> I, I think so. And I, I, I also think we'll all lose that race because it will probably react immediately and go to zero. But I, I, think, um, I think we are uh, truly, um, yeah, in, in the uh, proverbial, if, uh, if that happens. I'm loving all the comments about all my, uh, my lovely cat. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say, um, your 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 cat has stolen has stolen the show. I'm I'm, I'm very upset. My, my my little kittens are extremely upset. Not to mention the little fellas. The little fellas, they can't work this out at all. What's all this? Why look, look at us? Don't we look better? Don't aren't we more appealing than the cats? No, I mean, I no. I can't, I, mean, I can't say I'm surprised by Winky's uh, real X factor on. He's got a face for a TV, so he's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's where he should be. <laughs> yes. I, look, Martin, I've, I've got to run. I'm really sorry. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, really nice to chat to you, though. And you. Thanks for calling in and have a great day. Thank you, Andy. You Take care. Bye. Cheers. There's Andy Shovel. What do you think of that then? Andy Shovel is uh, thinking of uh, buying some more shares of Virgin Galactic. He's half a million dollars or thereabouts down, and uh, he is relatively 
bullish. I think that was fair to say. He's concerned, as we all are. But that's good to, good to hear, right? That must make you feel better today that a major investor, a major retail investor, not an institutional investor, he does own his own successful business, a very successful business in the UK, very successful business. Um, so he's not... Uh, a, you know, a regular, a regular folk. He, he kind is. He's one of my mates, but you know what I mean. He's not an institution. He's a, he's a retail investor, be it a large one. He believes in it. He's holding his position. What do you think? Well, there you go. That was a special live event, a Virgin Galactic special. Stay with me. I've got a special surprise coming up. Click above my head, down below the description, over here and over here. Until next time, as always, Join me tonight for a special, special surprise music concert on my music channel. Link's down here. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other.